Hi there, and welcome to this month's strategy. And in this strategy, I want to look at how we can use the daily stat pack information that you get in your daily digest, um, assuming that you have checked uh, to include that in your daily digest, uh, how we can use this short list of horses uh, to narrow down um, the runners that we're going to bet on. Um, this particular approach uh, is going to usually find you um, odds on selections. Um, they will win very often, but the odds will be uh, low, sometimes very low. Um, so if you don't like odds on selections, this may not be for you. However, I do recommend you read my blog post um, that I wrote recently. Uh, I believe it was published on the, uh, the 19th of September 2019. So if you go back into the blog and look for the blog post um, called the 4%, uh, the lazy man's 4% uh, profit, I think, or something along those lines, on November the uh, 17th, 2019, I believe. Um, you'll see some very important information there about mindset and uh, return on investment and low odds selections. Um, I do mention in it that I will be sharing an odds on strategy. Um, this isn't it. This is another strategy specifically designed uh, to take the daily stat pack list of contenders and narrow them down further. Um, so you get every day uh, your daily digest and you can choose what is in it. Um, by default, everything will be selected and you can change that in the settings page here from your dashboard. And if you scroll down, you'll see at the bottom here, uh, daily digest. Uh, the position of this might be slightly different depending on whether we've done any updates and added new features by the time you're watching this video. And from here, you can check which of these features you actually want your Daily Digest email to contain. So it can be completely customizable to what you want. Um, I have everything coming out. Um, and today we're going to look at the Daily Stat Pack selections. Now, these Daily Stat Pack selections come from um, our down here, the today's stat pack on your dashboard. Scroll down and you can see them listed here. And we can find these and how they're found by clicking on the view all button. And that will show you all of the trainer and jockey stats for the day. And you can see at the top that we explain that we start by looking for jockeys and trainers with a minimum of a 17% strike rate over the course they're running at today. And um, we recommend that when you consider the horses we find, you remove any uh, that have odds higher than 16 to 1. Um, but you can see here there's a breakdown of the stats um, at each course for trainer and for jockey, uh, the number of wins, number of runs, and their strike rate. Uh, and we do that at every course every day. And then at the bottom, you'll see the strongest runners based on the 17% strike rate in today's race cards. So the strongest runners are horses that have both a jockey and trainer strike rate of over 17% in today's race cards and uh, and then we can look at the going the distance and the course stats to try and narrow that down a bit further so the first thing i want to do is i actually want to come to the view all page that we've got here so that i can see we know already that these are going to be the strongest trainer and jockey horses uh, running today and um and we can see that list here but what i'm interested is in the going, the distance, and the course strike rates. And I want these to be pretty decent. And we can see straight away that none of these horses have won on the going. Okay, so that's fine. So we can almost remove that uh, for the moment. This leaves us just distance and course. Now on the distance and course, I just want to find the strongest horses. So for example, Freya in the 230 at Beverly has a 50% strike rate over the distance and 100% strike rate on the course. So that's clearly a strong horse. The 305, a horse has a 33% strike rate and 100% uh, over the distance and 100% over the course. Again, nice and strong. But we look at Cape Isle and actually this horse has only got 16% strike rate on the distance and hasn't won over the course of the going. So I'm going to scrub that one. And again, the same with the 410 at Beverly, reassure. I want at least two. Uh, I want the horse to have won over at least two of these three three primary factors going distance and course if it's not one over um, two of them so if it's only one over one of those factors then I'm not interested in it so that removes these two horses 
255 Sandown Palace Pier obviously won all of its races at distance and course. And bear in mind that it might have only raced once over the same distance or, or on the same course. So we're not looking huge numbers here. I'm just looking for something that indicates um, the horse has potential. Uh, and then the last three are the same. They've only won over the distance before um, and not the going or the course. So we scrub those. So immediately we take this list of uh, how many horses we have here. Three, eight, straight down to three. And that's the 230 Beverly Freya, 305 Beverly Fly Like an Eagle, and the 255 Sandown Palace Pier. Uh, now once we've done that, um, I've made a custom race card just for this. I'm just going to show you that quickly now. Uh, if we come in here, I've made um, a race card here called Stat Pack Contenders, and it's got 10 factors in it. And they're very simple factors. You can make your own race card like this. Just watch the uh, settings video in the training section of your members area, and it will show you how to create these race cards. But we simply just click on the ones we want, click on the ones we want to remove, and then we can drag and drop the position we want them to show on the race card. I've put on these factors here, these 10 factors. The 5278 is um, a combined factor. It contains a lot of information and it's a very strong factor and I like it as an overall view. DSLGR, days since last good race. Again, if you hover over the factors, um, they should give you um, a summary of what they are, like this. Um, they only do that, sorry, before you add them to the card so you can see which ones you want. But this is days since last good race. Um, which I always have, I like that. Um, the PFP PLR4 shows you how many points a horse has made uh, PFP points. PFP is a form rating. So it shows us how many points that horse has had in the last four races, either plus or minus. Um, the, this one here, number 124, is the average speed figure in the last 90 days. And then I've simply got whether the trainers and jockeys uh, and jockey trainer combination have made a profit to win and to place over the same course distance and race type. So that's that race card and you can make it yourself fairly quickly. Uh, you can just type these identities in here to filter the race cards and, and then you can just add them to your race card. Okay, so now we've done that, uh, we've got our race card and we've got our shortlist. So I'm gonna go to the 230 Beverly Freya. I'm gonna go over here and um, here we are, and we're going to have a quick look here. Now, the first thing I always do is sort by market odds before anything else, just to see where the market stands. And we can see immediately Freya is the favourite, and as I mentioned, odds on, very short odds. Um, that's fine for me. I'm more than happy with odds on horses. Um, and we can see that the trainer, while the jockey hasn't done well in the last 14 days, the trainer has 11% strike rate in the last 14 days. The trainer's been winning. Again, that's also good to know. I'm going to scroll quickly over here to our race card that we've made. You can see I've already chosen the race card from uh, from the list here. So first of all I've got Reynolds ranking that confirms Freya is the best with a score of zero. Um, but because this is a novice stakes races, uh, novice stakes race, um, a number of the horses don't have uh, information. This minus inf is what that means. So the minus inf means that we don't have um, any factors for this horse that we can use to calculate the Reynolds ranking. Um, and if you want to see what factors go into the Reynolds ranking, you can just click on this here and you can see that on this particular race card, there's only two factors that go in to the Reynolds ranking, um, which means that Samil will not have a, a rating for either of these factors. So we can't score it. Uh, and actually, if we just open Samil and look at previous races, we can see it's not run before, which will be why we can't give it a score. Uh, so the 5278 indicates um, Freya is top rated. Now this uh, this race only has four, and usually the top four in this race uh, will win between 52, uh, sorry, the top four for this factor, this rating will win between 52 and 78% of the time, depending on race conditions. Obviously in this race, the top four are gonna win 100% of the time because there's only four runners. But importantly, Freya is listed as a top runner. Course distance in the same race. And this is interesting here. See, we've got a course here, and course winner and distance winner. And this little star means that the horse was a course and distance winner in the same race. Um, so it has actually won 
on this course over the distance it's racing today, um, which is seven furlongs and 96 yards. So that's a, a positive indicator. Uh, had a good race in the last 18 days, another positive indicator. Uh, clearly the fastest horse here, averaging over the last 90 days. Admittedly, uh, these have only got one race, but then you know we've only got two here. Uh, also, you can see the form for this horse is uh, a first and a second, and Eventful was eight, and El Jawar was six, so that's not surprising. And then, interestingly, we come to the trainer profits. So we can see the trainer over this course distance and race time uh, has actually made in his career a flat bet profit of 10 units, but made a massive loss in the place market. The jockey has made a small loss um, in the win market, and again, a big loss in the place market. And the jockey trainer combo, again, very interestingly, has made a strong profit here, six units over this course distance and race type, but not really much um, in the place market. So clearly the place market's not great. You can also put in, if you want here into this race card, you could put in strike rates or return on investment for the trainers and jockey over these uh, conditions as well, if, if you're interested in that. But um, the strike rate would probably be also quite interesting to, to make sure that the low odds that we're expecting uh, marry with the strike rate we're expecting. Um, so I've gone through the card like that, and I like the fact I'm looking for some profit to have been made ideally by the trainer and jockey because um, a lot of these horses are going to be novices, and so we want to see that the trainer and jockey can actually be profitable or at least as near as break even as damn it. So all the indicators so far are pointing to a strong horse. Um, PR odds we can see um, is the best rated. It's indicating that the odds might be slightly higher. Um, or should be slightly higher than here, but it's by far the strongest in the race. Uh, if I click on that, I can also see the actual score. So our raw score indicates that uh, the horse has a 59% chance of winning, and that's before we merge it with the... So that's our raw odds. Um, so based on our probabilities, our odds are 1.69, but the figure you see here has been merged with uh, the, the market odds, the current market odds, and um, obviously, I'm currently allowing 75% weight to the market odds, so it's reduced it significantly. But what it, this does, even in this case, is it, it lets me see very quickly that actually um, this horse is clearly the strongest in the race and we expect it to win. So I'm just going to select it by clicking on it. You see it will turn green. I'm just going to add it to selections. Uh, I'm not going to fill in these details, but purely for speed, I do recommend that you do. Okay, so we found one. Uh, and we like Freya. Now we move on to the 305 at Beverly, Fly Like an Eagle. And let's come over here and see what this horse is like. And again, oh, okay, again, only three runners in this particular race. It's another novice race we can see here. Um, I expect the horse to be very low odds again. Obviously a three-runner race and 1.43. Uh, so not as low as before. And interestingly, uh, we're a bit closer here on our, our own odds line, 1.45. And also... The uh, only other contender seriously seems to be Bertie's Princess. I mean, our, our odds line for Liberty Philly is huge, although Betfair, obviously the market is saying it's a lot lower. Um, but essentially this is likely to be a two-horse race. Um, okay, so with that information, we do the same process as before. Now, the first thing I notice, if I sort by Reynolds ranking, you can see that actually it's Bertie's Princess that has the strongest Reynolds ranking, and that it will be based on the PFP PLR4 rating and the speed figure. And if we look at that, we can see that actually um, there's been no form points uh, improvement in the last four races or three races for this horse. So that means that it's still at its base score for the PFP form figure, um, which is a concern. Um, and the PFP form figure is uh, based on a chess algorithm uh, for matching uh, collateral form. So it compares every horse that each horse race against. And then it compares all the horses those horses have raced against, and it kind of brings it back to give a, a weighting and a score. So um, there's been no improvement there, which is a bit of a concern. And then the sp average speed for this horse is actually the worst in the field, um, although it has come, its form is much better. Uh, we can see that it's a course distance winner again, as expected. We know that from the previous stats, but this was done in the same race. 
or it has done it in the same race and uh, was a beaten favourite last time out. And if we click on that horse, we can see uh, last time out came second, was beaten by three and a half lengths, going was heavy um, uh, in a 4K race over one mile 68. And if we just close that now, we can see it's good to firm today in a shorter race. Um, and having a look here, uh, it's performed better in shorter races, but it did come second there, first there, and carrying um, 9.5. So, all weather. Um, whereas today, it's carrying 9.9 again. So, indicates that the odds are probably a touch, a touch on the low side. Um, however, it does rank first for the 5.278, and has had a good race in the last... 35 days, but then so has Bertie's Princess. Um, looking at profits, this is a great sign. Uh, trainer course distance type profit is positive um, and negative here, but interestingly, Bertie's Princess uh, place profit for the trainer is positive, whereas Fly Like an Eagle, M. Johnson has made a massive loss, as we already know, because it's the same trainer as in the previous race. So we're going to have the same. Uh, profits here because it's the same trainer and actually I think it's the same jockey as well. Let's just have a quick look back um, Freya, yeah, it's the same jockey as well same jockey and trainer so it, We know what uh, it's going to be for fly like an eagle um, Bertie's princess to place here uh, Made a profit and hasn't really made much of a loss the uh, the this trainer and jockey Here but interesting look at the weight difference. There's a massive difference in weight for Bertie's princess to fly like an eagle, 8.11 to 9.9. Nine. Um, this horse is used to running with 8.11 and uh, on good ground. Okay, so I mean, what we're seeing here as a summary is that fly like an eagle is probably the best in the race. Uh, however, there are a couple of concerns, such as his average speed figure um, over the past. And actually, Bertie's Princess clearly has an element of chance. You can even see that in the PR odds and in the VDW score. Um, so, you know, this horse clearly has some form of a chance. We're expecting it to be a two-horse race. And actually, am I comfortable with these odds? 1.43? Probably not. Um, I'm probably not comfortable with those odds, so I wouldn't bet it because there is too much of a possibility. When you're betting short odds horses, uh, which most likely the, uh, the stat pack contenders will be, and the reason for that is because is we're using trainer and jockey information to create this contender list. So by definition, that information is available easily to the majority of the betting public. So they've taken it into account and they're aware of it. Um, so that shortlist is always going to contain um, short odds horses. Um, and, and for us, it's about finding the short odds horses, even if they are very short, like uh, Freya in the currently 1.17, actually finding errors within our ratings, uh, like I've been showing you, where we feel that actually we have an edge and it is worth betting at those short odds. We're effectively buying an investment, uh, a short term investment at those odds and expecting to get, uh, in the case of Freya, a 17% return on our money. Um, which is actually an excellent return on the investment. Um, so, fly like an eagle for me. Uh, we've been through it. It's not clear cut. Bertie's Princess definitely has a chance. Um, we're making the odds a little bit too short for me in that race. And then finally, we are going to come down to 255 Sandown Palace Pier. So we move over to Sandown. And it was uh, the 255. Actually, I'm going to show you another way to get to your races as well, because uh, I don't often use this method. But if you click on your right sidebar up here, you can go to races, and then you can choose your course and go straight to uh, the one that you want. So 255 at Sandown. And the horse that we are looking for is Palace Pier. So first of all, let's sort by Betfair odds. Palace Pier, unsurprisingly, low odds, top of the market. Uh, again. One race, in fact, all of these horses have had one race except for Balzac that's had none. Again, we're in a, another novice stakes. Uh, as I mentioned, you're going to find that a lot of these races are novice stakes. Uh, and that's also good because the market is very indicative in these. Uh, Palace Pier's course distance winner, as we know, and this confirms that it was a course distance winner on this course over the same distance of seven furlongs it's running today. So that is all excellent. Um, 
to narrow this race card down to make it a little bit uh, smaller to look at, I'm actually going to remove any horses over 16 to 1, as mentioned on our stat back page here. So I'm just going to remove these now. And I'll just do that by clicking on the X next to each horse's name, and it drops them down into the eliminations here. If you want to bring them back, you can just click on that X again. But that just makes it a bit cleaner and a bit simpler. Um, yeah. RR is the uh, lowest uh, score for Palace Pier, so that's good. We're always going for the lowest RR. The Reynolds ranking, the lower that figure, the better. And that's zero, although there's not much difference between Palace Pier and uh, Mars Lanny, to be fair. Um, and we can see that because neither of these have a, a increase uh, in their PFP score of the last four races. So they're doing it purely on uh, the average speed in the last 90 days. And clearly Palace Pier has a higher speed, got a better speed in that race than Mars Landing. So um, hence this Reynolds ranking is 0 and 0 0.3 because it's just measuring this small difference. Um, so uh, Palace Pier has had a good race in the last 19. Obviously, it won it. Uh, and if we actually open this and have a quick peek at the race, it was at Sandown, seven furlongs. Oh, of course, it was a course distance winner. So basically, and it was on good to firm with a weight of 9.5. So we can see everything is the same as today. Flat turf, good to firm, oh, good going. So shouldn't have a problem. Seven furlongs, uh, 9.5 increased to 9.8. That's pretty small, shouldn't cause a problem. Um, Trainer is in good form uh, in the last 14 days, 31%. This shows you just the last 14 days. Um, so ran well, the best average figure here. Um, the trainer has uh, made a loss over course and distance to win and place, um, as has the jockey, but that's the same for both horses. So there's not a specific way of betting this. I mean, sometimes you'll find that a trainer and a jockey have made significantly more profit um, in the place market uh, as opposed to the uh, win market. And in those cases, actually, it's sometimes beneficial, even at odds-on selections, to bet in the place market um, just to get that little bit of an edge. Everything looks strong for this horse here. If I open this up, though, and so, see, here's a little bit of a concern here. So... I'm just going to put these horses back in for this. I should have done it before I eliminated them. I um, just want to look at the PR odds. And you can see here that actually raw numbers gives Mars Landing as a stronger horse in this race. And, and this is a little bit of a concern. The PR odds, uh, this score and this probability is an algorithm that takes into account all of the current race conditions um, and how the horse has performed. However, and this is a big but. Obviously, in races such as this, a novice race, where we've only got one race per horse, it's very, very difficult to get a solid history because there's just not enough information about the horse. And in these cases, I will tend to take the market over, um, over RPR odds for that reason. And um, so that's just a, a point out that obviously we can only create scores based on historic data when there's very very little historic data like this the scores are um they, they start to get quite rough and actually when we know that in these sorts of races in novice races the market is a really good indicator i will tend to overrule our pr odds um with the actual market odds um when everything else seems to be in line and in this case it does this horse looks to be strong and i would add that as a selection as well um so that's how we go through the race uh, quite quickly quite simply as i say most of these horses are going to be odds on they're going to be um they're going to be uh short odds horses um the thing that I would just like to show you before I finish uh, this month's strategy video is actually I'm just going to add into that race card. Um, I'm going to take out the, the profit uh, and just replace it with strike rates just to show you how you can use those as well and how they may affect your decision making. So um, my computer is running a little bit slowly now because of this recording and the software that's running on it. So please uh, bear with me while it loads. Um, so I'm just going to open up this race card here, and uh, I'm going to take out 
these for the moment now we've done this and I'm going to come back to uh, connections because that just filters all the ratings by connections and I'm going to scroll down to um, uh, trainer course distance type strike rate um, and hey let's put in the uh, place strike rate as well why not uh, same for the jockey am I down at the bottom not jockey trainer jockey here we are Strike rate, play strike rate, and uh, let's throw in the jockey trainer as well so we can see it. Here it is, strike rate, play strike rate. I'm just going to update that race card. And uh, I'm going to come back to the dashboard and let's go into the um, 230 Beverly. And uh, you can see we've uh, if we sort again, boy, I bet very well. So we've got our horse at the top. You can see actually the trainer has a 34% strike rate over this course and distance. 49% uh, place one. Jockey, 20% win, 41% place. And together, 26% win. So um, basically the trainer is uh, has improved the jockey slightly and the jockey's uh, decreased the trainer's strike rate slightly. And a 39%. So... These figures show that, again, the, the jockey and trainer like this course. And if we go over to Sandown, and in some cases you may find that actually having the strike rate instead of the profit is uh, a preferable way to analyse this as opposed to the profit because you're just looking purely at um, how they can win. So you can see here the difference. Um, a trainer's only won 17% on this course distance and race type, but has placed a massive 50%. And we compare that to 39% win, I believe it was, for the last one. That's a big difference. However, the jockey, uh, very strong on this course, distance from race type, which is promising since the jockey is the person actually riding the horse. Um, and the difference here between win and place is so small that you'd go for the win. And overall, though, the jockey and trainer have got a strong 29% strike rate on this course to win, 43% to place. Um, at these odds, it's probably not worth placing, but placing would um, be a pretty much guaranteed bet as you know uh, in, in inverted commas obviously you can't guarantee anything in betting but effectively what you're doing is buying money for a very limited risk um, um, however for me I would in, in, using the stat pack in this way I will be looking for win bets and um, and that's the process that I use and if you've got um, or at least it's one of the processes that I use. Obviously, I've added them as selections, so they're here, so I can see at the end of all my analysis my selections. Um, and this is one of the ways that you can use those um, the Daily Digest email here. You come and you look at your stat pack contenders, um, just jump straight in. Um, I like to go to the view all initially, um, but you can just click on the link and directly open that race if you want to go straight to the race uh, and just see on the horse's history uh, where their wins have been. I prefer to look at it um, on this page here where I've got all the stats and you get to that by clicking on the view all button. Now if you've got any questions about this approach and this strategy then please do post them in the forum. Um, would be great to see you in there. I'd love to answer any questions you've got. Thank you very much for your time. I recommend that you watch this video a few times. Uh, you practice the approach, paper trade it, um, uh, get comfortable with it. And of course, as always, adjust it to, to suit your own betting preferences if you need to. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.